Hi there, I'm just back with another impromptu video I wanted to share as I'm going to be doing one of my favourite things in the world which is destructive testing all in the name of science. So what I have here is three beams that are held together by structural two-part epoxy. Um, this is JB World uh, who reckon that this is going to bond at about 5600 PSI which is about 38 megapascals in real money. I really doubt this but they do make some bold claims, so we'll just wait and see. In this test, I'm gonna be using 44 by 44 bright steel box section with a two millimeter wall, and the bonded area is on either side of the vertical beam, giving me a wetted area of about 3,000 square millimeters, or about four and a half square inches, plus a little bit of leakage at the edges, as you can see. So after the epoxy was mixed up, um, it's held together with clamps, nothing too much as to squeeze all the glue out of the join, but just basically to keep it in place. The assembly was then placed on a radiator to assure that the curing process took part. Uh, you don't actually have to do this with two part epoxies as they are exothermic, but anything under 50 or 60 degrees is not going to harm this at all. And as you can see, the glue has gone off rock hard. I am pretty amazed at this stuff. Um, I've, I've used it to bond fiberglass and patch holes only on the edges and and you just can't get it out. It's it's incredible. I, I just don't understand how it works, but it does. The, the bond is just so strong. If you look here, there's a few bits of leakage and a few dribbles and I just can't get this off um, by chipping at it with my nail or trying to snap it. Um, yeah, for, for an off-the-shelf product, it's really impressive. As always, I did a few simulations of this test. Um, one of my goals in engineering is to get good at predicting structural loads through epoxies and validating my FEA results. This is a stress plot with 20,000 newtons pushing down on the vertical beam. That's about two metric tons. And as you can see, the metal is actually getting pretty stressed at the bottom where it's shown in green. When animated, you can see what the computer thinks will happen. This is obviously well over exaggerated, but you get the general idea. Let's have a closer look inside the box section and you can see the shearing forces at play. But beneath that patch, it looks pretty okay where there's a lot of surface area. So with a bit of trickery, I can get rid of the beams and just look at the glue. And this is what I'm trying to predict. Personally, I think 24 megapascals is about as much as you can expect from this. So anything in yellow, orange and red is actually a failure, which will lead to an ultimate failure um, pretty suddenly due to the stiffness of the cured glue. Okay, now for the main event. I've put this wood on here to try and even the pressure out on the vertical box section. It should dig in and stop any misalignment from the piston and the unit under test. I don't expect the supporting beams to take this lightly though, and I think that their moments are going to be sort of rotating inwards like this. I was going to partially clamp both of these units to keep them together, but I couldn't find anything suitable for this job. Lastly, the pressure gauge um, is all I have to measure the force. Ideally, I should have a load cell in here, but this is all I've got to work with. So all things being equal, I think this will fail about one and a half to two tons. It just seems like too much, but what do you guys think? Praise your bits now! Right, as soon as I started off, it became quite apparent that the wood wasn't going to hold up to this load. Uh, we quickly drove up to about one and a half tons, and I thought the glue would give up by now, but as you can see, it's not going to work. The wood's going to fail before I get any more force out of this, so I had to rethink this one. One nil to the glue, I guess. Okay, so the wood actually didn't work, and uh, yeah, it's done that. So the next thing I'm going to use is actually that block of aluminium instead. Right. Let's get that in there. Let's see if we can do this. Thing. That took me two times. You can 
certainly hear the glue fracture in there. That's got four tons on it. Oh my God, that went off like a shotgun. So let's see that again in slow motion, but this time with a countdown. I was not expecting that. Look at how high that cross beam flew into the air. Okay, let's back up now and look at how this thing actually broke. You can see the sides flew apart and this is completely the opposite of what I thought would happen. I'm so glad I didn't put any clamps on this, otherwise you just wouldn't have seen that. What the glue experienced here was complete shear and the box sections behaved perfectly. I, I don't think there was any peeling action taking place there at all. Once the sides of party company, the piston just rockets downwards and then sucked back almost instantly by the pressure. This fires the plate down into the side beams, which is a shame because I would like to have seen their trajectories. The peak force registered on the gauge was about four and a half metric tons, which is absolutely outrageous. I don't know how accurate this is, but it's got to be close because again, it's just simple mathematics, pressure over area. Okay, now let's have a look at the glue on the parts. I took a few close up photos of these to, to better analyze it. As you can see, the bond was near perfect. It was created with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and no mechanical key. Whatever I did worked pretty well and the glue seems to have ripped off about even. But look at the scales and that wavelet effect. This must be the cohesion in the glue itself being ripped apart. That's pretty interesting. I can't see any deformation in the metal either, which is also interesting as an edge weld here would have ripped this apart. I mean, I'm absolutely stunned by this. Um, this has all come out of a £6.80 tube of glue. That's remarkable. So looking back, was the simulation wrong? Well, no, it wasn't. It was operator bias. I thought there was no way that this glue would take the force that it did. Um, so let's adjust the simulation to the correct loading and see what it does. And here's the result. Obviously, twice the force will affect the steel twice as much although I didn't see the deformation that it's warning me of at all. Let's have a look at how the glue held up by looking at the plot, but this time in pounds per square inch. Well, that's pretty conclusive. Anything in the orange or the red is above the 5,000 PSI limit and backs up what JB Weld say. So no lies detected here. Before I go and before people start sticking their cars to the ceiling or something, I need to mention some caveats with this test. I think you all probably get it, but the strength of the bond is a product of many things. Surface preparation, bonded surface area, mixing quality, adhesive thickness, substrate type, i.e. whether it be steel, aluminium, glass, etc. Curing time, curing temperature, load direction, working temperature, and so on. I gave JB Weld here the best chance I could and deployed it in a test that would examine their claim. This does not mean the adhesive will work well as tested in every scenario. This is just for demonstration purposes. Adhesives are generally poor in dynamic loads that expose them to peel forces or excessive temperatures. Although you can get specific adhesives to overcome these qualities and they're usually tailored for a specific job. That said, I'll certainly be looking into bonding in the near future with my car and engineering projects. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. It was a bit of an eye-opener, and I certainly learned something from it, so thanks for watching.